amongst the supporters of channel member Andrew McRobbie. Well, folks, after two Champions League failures and last year's final day of the season disappointment, today we're going to learn if this is just a team of bottle jobs. We should win the league this year, but Bayern Munich have got other ideas. Hello and welcome to Club 3, part 14 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have what is effectively a title decider against Bayern Munich and then, fingers crossed, a trophy lift. If we lose against Munich, who knows? Who knows what might be about to happen? Since you were last with me, um, we've done pretty well in the league. We did drop points against local rivals Schalke, who are pushing for a Champions League spot in their own right, but we want to have three other league games, and it leaves the league table looking like this. Five points clear of Bayern, but they have a game in hand, and we play them now. So if they beat us and win their game in hand, they go top. If they win every game they've got less this season, left this season, they'll win the league. At the same time, it's still completely in our hands. If we win all of our remaining games, we win the league. In reality, neither of us are going to win every game, I would imagine, but Bayern have been pretty relentless in the second half of this season. They've definitely sorted themselves out under Bochettino after the failure of last season, and uh, we've got to beat them. There's no two ways about it. We've got to beat them. We've got the best players. Look at that. Look at it. Just look at all the Dortmund players on there. We've got to win the league this year. It's been 20 years since we last won the league. We have already qualified for next season's Champions League, which means our transfer budget has grown even larger. We had £85 million left over from the uh, from the January transfer window that we hadn't spent, and uh, we've had that added to. So there is a war chest for us to spend. We still need to sell before we can buy. We still have too many players to fit into a Champions League squad. So we'll worry about that in the next episode for today let's just please win the league this is the team with oh by the way emil hiskey won uh, won the next gen um can i show you that uh, there you go he won the next gen interestingly fifth place in the next gen was nadzak um so he finished fifth which is an interesting one van eijma only finished 12th in the next gen has however now made his de debut for the Netherlands at 18 years old and had a new even more money contract extension because he's my hero so he's sticking around for a while we're not going to lose him in the summer with that new contract but this is the team for the Bayern Munich game um why am why has past Kev put Pilipovic in goal because Ribeiro's injured oh that's not a good idea so we've got Pilipovic in goal remember him he has made his Serbia debut now He's not great. He's in goal and, and injured or not really fully fit Van Veen, but he's our captain, so has to play Van Veen at left back, Garcia, Schakowsky and Ferreira at the rest of the back four. We then got Ayadeli and Van Ajmer at midfield, Moreira on the left, Carrier on the right, and then Egan and Emil Hiskey up front. I am alarmed and worried and terrified at what, Bayern Munich have been capable of doing. It's just mad the way they've caught us up over the course of this second half of the season. We were 10 points clear at one point. Um, I did notice as well, um, their new backup striker behind Cirulli, the greatest striker in world football, their backup striker behind him is Peter Nim, the guy we had on loan from Liverpool when in our last season at Burton. So um, it seems like me and Bayern Munich have similar tastes in strikers. I'd love Cirulli. They obviously previously had Big Kev and Egan. I've had Nim before. Um, I mean, if they want to give me... I'll swap them Cerulli for Emil Hiskey if they want to. I don't want to lose Hiskey, but I'll probably take Cerulli as an exchange if they want to do that kind of deal with me. And then we'll have all had all of them. And that's just Germany's striker situation, although very few of them are actually German. The Bundesliga's striker situation. Right, let's... Oh, look at that. Crunching tackle on Phil Foden. That's what you like to see. And now Schakowsky forward to Van Eijmer. And that is a rare misplaced pass from Stallone Van Eijmer. I really hope he's not going to have a, uh, a bottly day today as an 18-year-old in a high-pressure match. And Bayern have taken the lead. And this does not bode well for us at all. We, uh, I mean, you can't call last season's Bundesliga a bottle job because we were never supposed to win it. We came close. We almost did. Um... 
and it was an incredible performance, but that certainly wasn't a bottle job. But losing a Champions League final always stings. We've then had what can only be described as a bit of a flop of a season in the Champions League this year, only getting into the last 16, and to be 10 points clear of Bundesliga and then potentially not win it, there's no way to sugarcoat that. That would be a bottle job. And you have to start questioning the mentality of some of these young players that we've got. I'll, I mean, you're not going to question me. I'll, I'll question the mentality of the youngsters. Um, right, Garcia with the long throw. We could really use an equaliser here. Schakowsky nods down. Van Aijma back out to Garcia. Schakowsky tries to find Ferreira, but doesn't. But there is Van Aijma. Slots it through to Egan. And that probably should have been a goal, although it was given as offside. But good to see Van Aijma back to threading through balls through the way that he does. Although he's got a damaged foot. Um, but he's so important, even as an 18-year-old to this team, that I think we just make him limp through because he's he's our, he controls the game. He is our most important player, arguably. Um, he's not our best player yet, but he does control the game and makes everyone else around him play better, which is beautiful um what is not beautiful is the fact that we're losing as we head towards half time and i am and i've mentioned it a couple of times before starting to have serious reservations about this 424 just to, just for general use it's great for blowing away the rubbish in the bundesliga and i think i mentioned it in yesterday's episode that playing in the bundesliga in this version of the future is very much like playing in scotland um there's a couple of good teams and everyone else is awful and we just thrash them all and it's a great system for thrashing dross but we struggled against inter although we weren't using this system egan's in that is very, very important. Connor Egan has scored against the club that never gave him the opportunity. And it's a defensive mistake. And that is going to be a very, very sweet goal for Connor Egan because he's showing them exactly what they could have had if they'd have just used him. Lightning pace and excellent finishing. It's 1-1. And that do. We'd take 1-1 in this match because a draw in this match means that even if Bayern win their game in hand, they still can't catch us unless we slip up. So a draw here is fine. Obviously, we'd love to win a win and we've basically won the league. But... A draw works for us. It keeps Bayern Munich at arm's length. I can't remember the point I was making before Egan scored. I'm sure you could probably figure out the rest of it from there, though. Let me know down in the comments what I was trying to say, because I've completely forgotten. Um, right, Garcia playing it across to Ayadeli. And now Emil Hiskey's got three men on him. Um, Van Ajba also had three men, but he can just dance away and find the pass. Hiskey is in, and Hiskey's scored now. And we've turned this game on its head with our two young strikers. They've got nearly 50 goals between them this season people said it wouldn't work never mind the fact that Big Kev's got nearly 20 from uh, from the backup position up front as well and Addy Ebby still scores when he gets the opportunity to play um, but Hiskey and Egan this is why I wouldn't want to move away from the 4-2-4 because who on earth do you drop out of those two they're both they're both undroppable. We'd have to do something else to strikery and then you've got Carrier and Marrera are undroppable so you have to play a front four unless, I don't know, is Marrera undroppable? Could we maybe play Carrier in behind the front two and maybe do a diamond or like a 4-3-1-2 or something along those lines for the bigger games? I mean, ultimately, if we beat Bayern Munich here, balls to having a different system for the bigger games, we'd have won a huge game with this system and we were just unlucky against Everton and we didn't use it against Inter so maybe we don't need to throw the baby out with the bathwater but at the moment it's 2-1 they've taken Cerulli off Nim is on and we'll be looking to make a point to me in the same way as Egan wanted to make a point to Bayern Munich because although I had Nim I never used him as my starter and clearly Bayern Munich really rated him to bring him in as effectively the Egan replacement um, but we just want to see the game out if we can come away with this victory, like I say, that is the league all but one. We'd be eight points clear. Yes, Bayern would still have a game in hand, but eight points clear with four games to go for us. That's a lot of clawing back points for them and a lot of messing up that we'd have to do to even give them the opportunity to claw back those points. This would knock the stuffing out of them. They lost They uh, They lost the league last season for the first time in 18 years. I think they'd won the league 18 years consecutively and then they slipped up and Bayer Leverkusen won last year and we, I think, we did we finish second or did Bayern finish second? I don't even remember. Um, I know the th three of us were very much in the mix on the last day, um, but this... This is a huge step forward because this would mean 
that it had been two years since they'd won the league and two different teams had won it while they were away. It's a it's apparently a three horse race here now, although the third horse is miles back. It's a shame to see Schalke dropping out of the top four as well. But that is a huge, huge result. Right. I now need to try and do some Kev maths because I don't want to string this out. I want to see I want us to lift the trophy today. So I don't think we can do that against Eintracht Frankfurt. When do Bayern play again? Uh do they play before us? Yes. So, I mean, if they lose to Hamburg, then we could potentially win the league against Frankfurt. But we'll figure it out. I'll be back when I think we might be able to lift the trophy. That's probably the best way to do this rather than trying to guess in advance. Oh, my word. We are doing our very best to bottle this. We drew against Frankfurt. We've now lost against Wolfsburg. Two games left. This is the situation. We are now only three points clear. We do have a much better goal difference. So, I mean, we just need to win a game. If we win a game, we win the league. I hope, I hope, do we? Is that right? Yeah, because of the goal difference. It won't be mathematical. So we can't mathematically win it here because we play first, then buy and play Augsburg. They're definitely going to beat them because they're much better than them. Um, so, fingers crossed... We can pick up a win against Freiburg and then we'll do a trophy lift on the last day of the season. So I'll show you that game, I guess. Surely we can't bottle this. Right, I think we're avoiding the bottle job. So this was the penultimate game of the season against Freiburg. As you can see, 10 minutes to go. We are 5-1 up. I don't think we get a trophy lift at the end of this match, but I am going to film it just to be on the safe side because you never know. We're six points clear with a vastly superior goal difference. Bayern Munich play later today. Um, there is no way they can catch us unless they win their last two games like 20 nil each and we well it's probably not quite that much and i mean it's so realistically there is no way we're getting a trophy lift probably didn't need to show you this bit but you know we're doing a big win after after some of the results i've sat here and had to put up with it's quite nice to show you a big win happening so i'll continue showing you the big win um but yeah if i mean if the, if they don't win we will win the league outside of a match as well, which I mean, I think means we don't get a trophy lift at all, which would be really disappointing for our first top-level league title of non-league to legend this year because you don't get a trophy lift unless you win it in the match. I don't think we would get the Guard of Honour in the next game, though, which the Guard of Honour is always fun. It's a nice little newish feature. I think Is it new in FM24? Certainly not, but it's, it's new enough for me to always forget it's there and skip over it whenever we win a league title on stream. So um, it would be quite nice if Bayern Munich managed to bottle things and we get to see the Guard of Honour in a video because at least it makes up for the fact that we wouldn't get a trophy lift in that scenario. Obviously, best scenario is weirdly, that they win but only 1-0, so there's really no way they're catching us. And uh, and then on the last day, doesn't really matter what happens, they're not going to do a 23-goal swing and uh, we get a trophy lift, which would be jolly good. Let's just see what happens in their match, though, because obviously if we do win the league, I want you to be here with me when it happens. Let's just give Emil Hiskey a little pat on the head. He's got better and better as the season has gone on. And Bayern drew. That means we've won the league. I think. I think we've just won the league, boys and girls. Let's just double check. I was looking for it in there, there and didn't see it. But no, it's there. We have, we've won the Bundesliga. What an anticlimactic way to do it. I'll still show you the last day of the season. The last game of the season. But... There we have it. We're now joint second on most times won the league. We've got a long way to go before we catch up with Borussia Dortmund. We're, we're Borussia Dortmund with Bayern Munich. Um, but Bayern now not won the league in twenty in two years. And we'd gone 20 years without winning one. Is it 20 or 19? Either way, it had been a long time. We've only gone and won the league, boys and girls. We'll have a standing ovation, thank you. It's not showing on here yet. That's very upsetting. Um, oh, actually, that means 21 years, not 19 years. Can't do maths. Let's go and see if we get the trophy lift, but at the very least, have a lovely guard of honour. So here we go then, going into the final game of the season, knowing we've already won the league, but we want that guard of honour. 
And this is the 11. Ribeiro in goal. A back for Van Veen, Schakowsky, Mormon, and Ferreira. Van Eijmat and Ayadeli in midfield. The wrong way round. Um, Carrier on the left. Herrera on the right. Egan and Emil Hiskey up front. By the way, did just check the Dream 11. Van Eijmat is already in there alongside Ayadeli. Garcia's in there. Interestingly, our backup goalkeeper, Pilipovic, is in the Dream 11 which suggests I might be playing the wrong goalkeeper. And then Emil Hiskey and Carrier also in there as well. So uh, that's all pretty good. Look at that. Egan and Hiskey up there as second and third. What a strike partnership they are. I mean, it's very, very impressive. Um, Adiemi, by the way, has told me he's going to leave at the end of his contract. So he's gone on the transfer list. Um, makoko has gone on the transfer list at his own request. I realise that's a homegrown player and not ideal, but we've got more homegrown players coming through. Um, Van Eijmat and Hiski will become homegrown players for Champions League. Um, we've also, um, Emil Smith-Rowe recovered from his cruciate ligament injury and then immediately tore the knee ligaments in the same knee. But unbelievably, he's had a contract offer from Club Club America in Mexico. So I think he's heading there, presumably not on the kind of money he's on with us. He has not featured all year because he's been injured all year um, and he's out of contract. So he's going to be leaving as well. So three of the old guard probably on their way out this summer to go along with the £144 million of a transfer budget we've got and a half million or so a week in wages that the three of them leaving will generate means we've got a fun transfer window coming up, which will... Uh, which, I mean, we need to build a team that can win the Champions League, which I think, I still think, is probably going to involve us having to change the tactic. I don't see us winning the Champions League with this 4 2 4. I think it's too attacking. Right. How do we get this Guard of Honour? There it is. Look. Here we come. Do we bring the trophy out? Do we bring the trophy out with us? There's a little clipboard situation there. Van Veen leading us out. I've never actually sat and watched this before. It's quite nice, isn't it? Why do I not get to walk through it? Why am I clapping? I should be absolutely walking with them. I'm the mastermind of this. Why do I have to do the clapping? I should be the clapper. Clappy? Clappy. Not clapper. I was clapper. Should be clappy. Um, but yeah, with those three players leaving, obviously there's going to be... I mean, it's already a lot of money to spend, but there's going to be a lot of money to spend. And we're going to have to figure out how we spend it. There's probably going to need to be a few more players move on as well. Some of the fringe guys. Um, someone like Hassan Begovic, for example, who what, is still a wonder kid, but just he's third choice on the right wing, fifth choice up front. We need to make a decision on someone like him. Are we... Are we going to keep him and get some players out of his way so he can actually get some game time? That would mean realistically moving on either Carrier or Herrera, which is very unlikely, but maybe we would. Um, or do we loan him out or do we sell him? Because there's no point just keeping him knocking around in the squad, not being able to be registered for the Champions League, getting upset. So there's going to be a few boys like that that we might move on. And then fill up the squad with awesome. Obviously, the young players from this year will be improving, especially Hiskey and Van Ajma, who are both still teenagers. They're going to be progressing enormously off the back of being regular starters in a league-winning season. They're going to go on to become two of the best players in the world, probably. So we want more players of that kind of calibre. If we can find more of that, then we'll be very, very happy. That's the plan for the summer. What I'm going to try and avoid doing is throwing the entire budget at one player. But, you know, if the right player comes along, maybe maybe O'Donoghue turns up here in Dortmund. Why not? Let's go to Burton and just raid Burton for a superstar. We're probably not going to, but we might do. Oh, Van Eijman nearly scoring a... Nearly scoring an incredibly good goal, but somehow, I think it hit the post because it didn't go out. The play continued, so I think it's come back off the post. And unfortunately, we weren't the first to react to it. The Stuttgart players came away with the ball and uh, we weren't able to open the scoring. Obviously, we already know we've won the league. We don't know if we're going to get a trophy lift. What I would like is a win on the last day so that we've got something to celebrate. And uh, I want to see us lift that trophy. I don't know if they're going to do it, though. Why would they do a trophy lift at an away game when we've already won the league the week before? But then, thinking in terms of how it works in real life, of course they lift the trophy in this match because you've got to have the trophy lift. You can't have... Imagine the Premier League being won and them, them not lifting the trophy anywhere. They'd do that away from home. So, I don't know. 
the trophy must be here. That's my th- that's my thinking. It must be here somewhere. Um, right, we've got a corner here. We've obviously got a lot of big boys who can try and get on the end of this. Corner comes in and big boys don't connect, but Van Aijma is there to play it back to Herrera. Cross comes in, looking for Egan, but he can't get onto the end of it. And now Ferreira tried to keep the move going, but wasn't able to. And now Van Veen with the throw, it falls to Ayadeli. And now Carrier in a shooting position. He usually... I was going to say he's usually on the right coming in on his left and would score there. Whether he's going to be as effective on the left, we don't know. Now we do know. He can do it just as easily on the other foot, coming off the left, come across and hit it on his right. We've seen him do that goal many times off the other wing, but now we know he can play on both wings. That was the one experiment I've allowed myself today. And uh, Carrier passes with flying colours. It's a lovely finish from him. It's 1-0. It doesn't matter what Bayern Munich are doing in their game. Um but we are now currently five points clear of them. And uh, fingers crossed, trophy lift. We want a trophy. We're not going to get one. I don't know why I keep mentioning it. I'm getting excited about the prospect of it happening. And I am like, I'm 90% sure we're not going to see it. But the whole reason I'm showing this match is just in case. I feel like we've earned one. We've been playing this save since November. And this is the first major domestic league we've won in the entire save. That's four months of hard work. We've earned a visual trophy lift. Otherwise, I'm going to have to book an open top bus and we're going to drive around, going to drive around Dortmund in it so we can all cheer and shout about that. I think this is a red card here for Stuttgart. Egan's been clattered. I hope he's not been injured. He looks like he's about to... No, he was about to stand up, then went back down again. But I think he's managed to avoid an injury, which is good. The last thing we want is one of our superstar strikers to pick up an injury and derail the uh, derail all the fun we have out of those two. What Bayern are winning three 0 but it's somehow a five point gap. I, the maths doesn't work for me. Were we we were three points clear going in, weren't we? Weren't we? Have I missed some? Oh no, that of course they drew, didn't they? That's why we won the league because they drew their previous game. Now I understand. I should not be allowed anywhere near maths ever. I, I, I did an A level in maths, would you believe? It doesn't involve doing a mental arithmetic though. <laughs> so that that's my excuse. Just like geography is not about knowing the flags and knowing where the capitals are. Maths, not about being able to do sums in your head. Right, I guess we should bring on Adi, Emi and Makoko for them to say goodbye. They're both very long servants. Um, so they can both come on here. And we're also going to give Dukic a little bit of fun playing in his libero position that he likes. We're just going to leave the other guys on wing back. Just, yeah, let's just play with one defender and see what happens. <laughs> we're experimenting. Dukic loves coming out of defence as the libero, though. And we like to have these wing backs pushing on and going forward. I have no idea how that back four is going to work. I kind of want to see it rolling in possession to see, is it literally just Mormon back on his own? That is exactly what it is. We are basically playing with one defender here and then a five in front of him. I don't think I've ever produced that shape in Football Manager before. Carrier trying to show me that he can do it on his other foot as well. Not able to on this occasion. So I guess Mormon basically becomes a sweeper. The offside trap is going to be a nightmare. Um, right. Stuttgart with the goal kick. I don't know why we're seeing a goal kick happen, um, but we are. And strangely, they've got one-on-one -on -one with Mormon. And, I mean, he's actually defended it really well, I think. So, shows that he is capable of being the defence on his own. We only need one defender. Perhaps that's the way we go on and win the Champions League next year. We just play a one-defender system because that's all you need, boys and girls. Iadeli coming back to help the one defender. But then, once again, we push forward with this shape where we have the three in there where Dukic makes a three the wing backs push on and it becomes a five across there uh, Mormon's the only one back and Yusuf Makoko has what is probably his final goal in his boyhood club in his uh, final Borussia Dortmund goal um, still managed to get nine goals this season as our fifth choice striker shows just how good he is but we've just got so many players ahead of him in the pecking order he's asked to leave we're not going to say no he's been here 15 years he can go and earn his money or get his glory, or whatever it is he wants to leave to do. Um, I'm fast. I'm loving this shape. Obviously, we couldn't do it against a good team, could we? Um, but it is. It's a lot of fun. There might be Makoko's last goal in a Borussia Dortmund shirt. He's showing just what he could have offered us if I'd have ever given him game time. I never really did. I mean, to be fair. 
The previous manager never really did either. If we have a look at Makoko, he's 28 years old. It's not like he's ever been a regular star for us. He never really, I think we got a version of him that never really fulfilled his potential, but certainly demonstrating that he could have scored goals for us, at least against a team of this kind of quality. Right, Dukic across to Ayadeli, and now Big Kev has dropped deep to become another midfielder. He is a natural central midfielder, so he is an option for dropping back deep and doing that. Look at how many players we've got forward. We are completely camped out in the Stuttgart half. This is this is a very dominating system. I'm tempted to do. Dare, are we going to make Dukic a defender? Are we just going to play with one centre-back? Is that going to be our new thing? It's certainly an option for us to switch to on occasion. Because it's it's ruining them. We're just absolutely dominating possession. The only problem is when we give the ball away here and we literally just have the one guy back. There he is. It's actually Ayadeli on this occasion because Mormon had gone forward for the set piece. But there is Mormon and there is Ferreira. The number 10, the right back who wears the number 10, slides across to Big Kev and he can't find the target. But at 3-0, this game was over long ago. We've had our fun with a little bit of tactical experimentation. And now, fingers crossed, we get a trophy lift. Come on, football manager. Please don't let me down here. Carrier with the corner. Um, he's looking for Dukic. Um, he does connect with it, but it just goes straight into the hands of the Stuttgart goalkeeper. And now we are just waiting for the clock to run out and to see if we get to have a little bit of a sing and a dance and some fireworks, because that's all we really want, ever. It's all we ever really want, a sing and a dance and some fireworks. Right, Ferreira to Carrier as we continue to just dominate possession. Carrier goes one way, then the other, and his shot goes into the side netting. In fact, he's won a corner here, so it must have been off the hand of the goalkeeper. So it's Carrier with the corner. Still two minutes of added time to to play here seems a little bit excessive from football manager to make us sit through it when we just want to see if we get a trophy lift but Makoko sprays it out to Maui and that's that do we get to see the trophy we do oh here we go we get the trophy lift beautiful stuff it's only a plate do we not get a cup who wants a plate goodness me this is this this was worth sitting through the tactical experimentation for, boys and girls. Look at how small Van Veen is compared to Big Kev. That is absolutely nonsensical. But there, here comes the trophy lift. I'm wearing the same tie as I am in real life, look. And there we have it. Borussia Dortmund, Bundesliga champions. Now we just need to put together a squad that can go and do that in the Champions League. And based on our experiences last couple of seasons that might be easier said than done but we've got the money to go and do it transfer special incoming with mega spendsies if you've enjoyed that please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos and thank you very much for watching